There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a short review of a wonderful novel from the country of Oman that I read earlier this month, Celestial Bodies by Joka Alharti, translated from the Arabic by Marilyn Booth and published this uh, late last year, 2018, by Sandstone Press. What a wonderful novel. This was a five-star read for me, and I don't want to tell you too much about it because I think you just need to dive right in but this is a almost a saga of several different Omani families and the first thing that you should know or that you will be running to Google to double check because you won't be believing what you read is that yes indeed slavery was not abolished in the country Oman until 1970 and I have just found out Mel mentioned in a comment and I just went to double check and as usual Mel is right slavery still exists in Oman there are according to one human rights organization still 26,000 people living in slavery in Oman but it was mostly I guess abolished in 1970 and so this novel is populated by uh, citizens of the country of Oman former slave owners and former slaves and chronicles several, I believe, at least three generations of the lives of these people, some of whom owned the others. And it centers on one family, really, but there's so many characters that are so fascinating that I hesitate to say that it centers on one family. But that family would be Salima and her husband Azan, who had three daughters that lived into adulthood, Maya, Asma and Kuala. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about their daughter, Maya, who married Abdallah. Because to me, that was the most fascinating part or the, that I followed the most avidly. But there are a cast of other characters, like I say, some former slaves and some former slave owners that people this novel. Maya marries Abdallah, the merchant son. She doesn't love him. She has her heart set on somebody else. She marries him they have their first child is a daughter and Maya and this daughter was born in 1981 Maya who's never had any exposure to the West or anything that we find out about says that the daughter's name will be London well the whole family <laughs> freaks out her husband the in-laws what the heck are you naming your daughter after an infidel city for and she puts her foot down and her mother supports her and that all happens in chapter one. And so there's no, that was not a spoiler. And I just like, Wah! the chapters, the short chapters are organized by the speakers or the focus of the consciousness. And the only first, I believe the only first person narration is Abdallah. And so my initial impression of him was that he must be a jerk. But in fact, he has a very round character that has many facets to it and he was fascinating in his family especially his relationship with his asshole father and the slave that raised him after his mother died and she's a large presence in the novel Zarifa. all of these stories interweave i had difficulty following it there is a family tree that helps to a certain degree i followed it as closely as i could the, the things that I was not able to sort out or keep track of did not detract from this being a five-star read for me. And I have left with many questions. And the questions I'm left with are part of the lush aftertaste of having sunk so deeply into this novel about people that live in such, in such a different culture to mine. And I want to reread it, and maybe I'll tease out some more of the mysteries. But the interplay between the former slave families and the former slave-owning families, it's not as cut and dry and separate as you would first believe. I'm just going to share a, sh a short paragraph from Chapter 1. And this is the... It's actually two paragraphs, but one's very short. It's the end of Chapter 1, and this is where Maya's mother, Salima, stands up to... Maya's new husband, Abdallah, 
about the naming of their firstborn child, London. Listen, son, Salima said to her daughter's husband. Abdallah, listen, about your wife here. She's had her first child, and it's a girl. Girls are a blessing. A girl helps her mother and raises her younger brothers and sisters. What we need for this new mother are 40 live chickens and a big jar of good pure mountain honey, plus a pot of Samna, the best country butter churned straight from a cow. When London is a week old, I'll shave her head and you will make an offering, as much silver as the little one's hair weighs. It'll be enough to buy a sheep. You'll have it slaughtered and you'll give out the meat to the poor. Salima pronounced every letter in the name London slowly and distinctly. Abdallah's face changed expression, but he nodded. He took his small new family and his mother-in-law back to Al-Awafi, their hometown. So just the mix of old traditions and new incursions into the culture, the name London and all the traditional mountain honey and butters churned and uh, offerings of silver that equal the little baby's the weight of her first haircut, just sets up an explosion of old and new and eastern and western and conformity and confrontation that pepper this novel in a way that I could barely put it down. I recommend it highly. It's not a book for everybody, so if what I've said resonates for you, please pick it up. But it's uh, definitely a Marmite book. But I loved it. Celestial Bodies by Joka Alharti. Thanks for watching.